Welcome to week one of the Building Boom Signature System. If you've just joined us, what we're doing is we're looking through all the criteria of what builders need to put in place in order to develop a great lead generation system for their building company. So week one is all about your ideal client, being able to define your ideal client and the benefits that come by doing that. And that sets up the framework and the foundation for all of your advertising and marketing going forward. So the biggest goal in setting up your ideal client is moving away from being a broad generic builder to getting very, very specific on who you build for and what you do as a builder. By defining that, what happens is, is you start to use the language that the client is using. In everything in your marketing material then becomes an asset where you're actually speaking to your clients directly rather than speaking to a broader audience. This builds affinity with your client and your, your homes and you as a builder, and it gives you more opportunity to convince and convert them to pick up the phone and become a lead. When we start looking at the foundations of this signature system that we've built, we want to look at the what we call the blueprint stage. This is the foundations that you're going to build everything that you do going forward. So all of your marketing campaigns, your advertising campaigns, how you actually structure your offers, all of that is resolved by working out your foundational uh, blueprint so that you get those components right. And the number one thing to start with is always who your ideal client is. So a lot of builders will tell us, uh, when we're, especially when we're working with the smaller volume builders or the bespoke, say, uh, custom home builders, will say, who's your ideal client? And they'll say, well, it could be someone from 28 to 70 years old. Uh, they could be retired or working. Um, they might live anywhere within two hours of us. Um, they, you know, it, it, they just have no real scope on who their market is. And they're going out really wide because they have served people over in these pockets. But what you want to do is you want to refine that, narrow down your targeting and really get a crystal clear picture in your mind of who your market is. So for example, you might look at your simple demographics. So you might look at how old they are, you know, what sort of age range. And if you, the narrower you can keep that band, the better. Now that doesn't mean you only build for them. It just means you know exactly who you're speaking to. Some people older will buy younger and some people younger will buy older. It doesn't matter, but just define an age, an age bracket. The location, that location might be key suburbs or postcodes where there's an availability of land. Or if you're in the luxury custom home market, it might be key suburbs and locations where people are building homes over a certain dollar value. So make sure you know that location. Also define where you won't build. For example, in the city of Perth, we have a lot of builders who do not touch hills projects. They don't want to work up in the hills. It's very specialized um, and they don't have the expertise or the tradesmen around those areas to actually make that worthwhile. The flip side of that, there's a lot of builders who build in the hills and specialize in the hills and they say that is their location and they don't do the flatlands and in, in the main city. So choose your location. You know, think about are these people married? Are they single? If you're a first home buyer, is it a single individual or is it sometimes most of your clients, young couples who are together, who are going to go in and buy, uh, build their first home? So think about that. Think about their income, what their earnings are like. That will then play out to what kind of car they drive. If they're in the top income range, they might be driving Mercedes, BMW, Audis, those sorts of brands. And then you can also later on target people who like those interests, knowing that they're the potential fit for your particular building company. And even gender, we can see sometimes we have a lot more men actually become leads than women for certain demographics of builders. So if your first point of contact is often men or women, one or the other, um, you can actually split up your advertising later. So th even think about that, who's making the first phone call or who's doing the research and getting on your mailing list. That's an important one as well. So there's some general demographics in, in identifying your ideal client. The next time uh, thing we look at is the type. So here's just another recommendation. You might say, look, are we going after first home buyers? Are we custom home builders? Are we just doing renovations? 
Are we looking at knockdowns and rebuilds in established suburbs where that's become really popular and you see these suburbs, perhaps even for things like uh, development where there's been new changes to the R codes where people will start to build more and knock down and put in triplexes or duplexes, that sort of thing. So have a think about the type of builder they are or, or client and how you're going to speak to them. If you own the first home buyers, this will go into uh, align with the age and the demographics of even location for first home buyers. You can then exclude certain targeted suburbs because you know first home buyers just aren't spending the money to get in there. So this is really important. Don't be everything to everyone because if you do that, the person that is specific is gonna win the business. The next thing is think about their problems. So no matter who's building a house, they've always got a problem that you can solve. Number one, who's my builder going to be and why? What is it in their mind that they're thinking about that they want solved? So for example, in first home buyers, finance is a big issue. A lot of first home buyers don't know how to get finance, don't know how much deposit they need. So that might be a key area that you know that's a problem that you can solve and you've perhaps got certain access to certain government schemes or uh, brokers that specifically work in the new home uh, building market who can sort out finance for these guys. Um, a massive problem, doesn't matter which market you're working in, is finding the right plan. So that's a problem that you can solve, especially if you've got a great portfolio of work. And that can be also in custom homes, it can be in uh, normal if you're a project home builder or a first home builder, but also in renovations, you being able to show them how they took or how you took a certain home and redesigned something and re-engineered it to give more space, more openings, more outdoor living, um, you know, bigger, bigger rooms, accommodate an extra bathroom, all that sort of thing. That will give them ideas. So think about that as being a problem that you can solve. Sometimes clients are time poor, so they don't have the time to necessarily go through everything. So what they're really looking for is they're looking for builders who can, who they trust and who are experts and positioned in a way where they do all the heavy lifting for the client. So they'll help them, the client by you know, helping them through the design phase, doing all the work without bothering them and making them spend hours and hours of time. Uh, you might also have an interior design service where everything is selected for you, that you take a one hour meeting and then your inter interior designers go away. That's another uh, problem that you're solving. So again, it creates that picture that we're looking for. Then people don't know where to start. Now this is often uh, linked also to a lack of confidence. So a lot of people, they walk into a home, uh, the building sales rep starts rattling off all this spiel and they don't understand any of it. To them, it's all jargon and gobbledygook that you know, builders start using uh, certain language about materials and all the rest. And people just get overwhelmed. And some people find that really hard to deal with. But if that is the case, again, first home buyers often have a lack of confidence because they've never done it before. They don't know what questions to ask. Then you have other people who may have a lack of confidence because they're built before and being burnt. That's where trust issues may come in. So again, all of these problems are ways that you can define using the clients that you've served in the past to know how you can actually speak to your future clients by presenting them solutions to the problems they have. And this is gonna give you a really good picture of your ideal client that's gonna become the foundation for everything you're going to do and build on with your marketing going forward.